All right, I went up uh, to look for Zilby, and he is uh, in his in his nest in his little bed. Uh, it looks super comfortable, and he I didn't want to grab him and pull him out, so he's gonna stay up there. Um, you updated Envim and now it crashes after a few seconds. Oh no, that's not good. Ho hopefully, hopefully you can figure that out pretty quickly. Tooling crashing is the worst. Like if there's going to be something that crashes, it should be our, our own code, right? Okay. So profiles, I should really go, I should talk about profiles. Um, but I don't like to use them. Okay, so for some reason I completely forgot how to do the what's, what's the command for comment in helix that's what you get for using nightly oh night yeah nightly is gonna uh that's gonna make it much harder Hero mapping. Okay. Hmm. There's no comment on here. Oh, there it is. Oh, control C. That's what it is. I was doing control slash. There we go. I did forget how to do it in Helix. Oh, and coffee, you're using vanilla Vim without any plugins. Yeah, I um, uh, all throughout my system in time, I was using vanilla Vim. Like, I was using VI for the most part of that, and then and then somebody showed me Vim. And I thought it was like the best thing ever because now I can get more than one line of undo. And that was it. Like I didn't even think about plugins. Like no, nobody told me that plugins were even existed at that point in time. You got an easy solution. Just roll back to your latest version. Power of Nix OS. I've, so I've heard of Nix OS and I've heard of Nix and lots of other things. I just never really do much with it. Vivex, are you on um are you on a Linux machine? Because a fun thing that you can do and a Linux machine is going to be faster with Docker than on a, a Mac or or Win or um Okay, NixOS. Okay, nice. Um Oh yeah, and you just said that too. Okay, so I don't know about NixOS. I'm guessing that it runs Docker natively unlike windows and mac but so because of that you could create a docker file that sets up all of your um your vim stuff like everything for vim and then you can run a docker container for each project uh and then just like do the um i guess either this watch thing in here with a docker compose file or with a um whatever it's called with the, just a volume to, to pass it in there. And you shouldn't get any, like too much, uh, um, negative, uh, uh, performance repercussions. And then your NeoVim and everything else is set up and was always work the way you expect it to. I did that once before with, uh, Vim. Um, I kind of want to do it again, uh, and set that up. 
Okay, so that basically Nyx lets you do that. I should I should take a look into Nyx. I've I've heard of it from multiple people and I've never used it or taken a look into it. Investigate Nyx for I guess like locking down everything version wise. Um, okay, so back to this profiles. So the problem with profiles uh, is that if you if you run something and let's say I want to run the back end. Now, if I do this, it will run the database because it doesn't have a profile, which means that it's all profiles. Uh, and if I have this profiles here with the back end, if I run this, only the database would run and not the back end. And so if I run dash back, if I run the back end profile, then it would run the database and the back end. So this is really only important when you want to run like multiple different things, but only some of your stuff at the same time, uh, which I've I've once now only had that, which was when I created the when I created the full stack Rust course, we had a single compose file that did both uh, like I did JavaScript backend, Rust backend, and sort of all sorts of other stuff. And I used profiles for that. Then I constant, I consistently forget to put the profiles in, and there's no good way of of listing what the profiles available are, and that kind of it just sucks. So I don't, I don't like profiles, but mostly because there's no good tooling for it. And going in and looking at documentation is not an answer to that, as far as I'm concerned. Like there should be a way for me to see what the profiles are. Like maybe like a command like else profiles or, you know, Docker compose profiles or something like that. Okay, so I'll put that in there to remind myself to look to talk about it. Restart is interesting. So do we want to restart this container if it's um, if it terminates for some reason? Now we have we have some different choices for this. Uh, I don't want to do this right now, but I, I want to say that if you do restart always, it will restart the container even after a reboot of your system, which is both is really nice for production stuff and really terrible for local dev stuff, because then you're going to forget you have it on. And then now it's like you just have your database or whatever server running constantly. Uh, so I might want to I, I usually for dev don't have this on, but restart is interesting. Uh, this we have a on production section that we're going to talk about later. So that would maybe be where this comes in. And maybe that's also where profiles would come in too. I don't think I need runtime ever. Secret, so we could actually have secret type stuff in here. Uh, and I believe there's that secrets manager that we could do too. So during um, production, we'll probably talk about this as well. Volumes. Okay, so now here's where we can set like what the volumes we want to do. And so we want to do um, volume. So volumes is interesting because it's one command for all the systems. So we want volumes. And then I want to do for the express CRUD, we want to volume in and mount our local this to. So we want um, essentially you to. Uh, slash code and that that's it right 
But for here, for our database, we want to create a volume. Uh, and this is going to be our database volume, which I don't need to set any configuration up. The defaults are perfectly fine, uh, but it is an object. So I have to give the colon there to tell it that it's an object. And then we're going to do volumes, and this is going to be database volumes, database volume two. And then we have to remember where exactly this goes. And that is uh, the volumes don't show up in here. No. Um, Yeah, here it is. Okay, so this is slash var lib postgresql data. And that's it. Okay, so that that should be everything working. So if we save this file, um let's go ahead close you we're gonna do a docker okay so it's docker space compose up wait so even though i told it to depends on i need to tell it to wait until it's healthy and then i also want to go into demon mode Although, even if I don't do daemon mode, uh, it'll just take over the screen and we'll just see what's going on. So this will be, this will be fun. Oh, interesting. Okay, so validating services database health check additional property start interval is not allowed. This option requires Docker engine version 25. Apparently I have an update. Um, can I, where's my Docker image? Docker engine. Oh, I have 23. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's a problem. Software update. All right. We're going to install this update and see if this works. Oh, and of course, it takes forever. Okay, there we go. Maybe. It's thinking. Okay, so now if we take a look at Docker Engine, we're at version 24. 
Oh, we're still at version. Okay, hold on. Version 24. Do you have an update for us? Can I make you version more? Oh, interesting. Okay. So I can't, I can't do this. I can't do start interval because, um, this version of Docker doesn't, doesn't allow that. So we're gonna have to do start interval and remove that for both of these. Okay. Let's try this again. All right, so everything works as expected. It first, it builds our container uh, and we can see that it builds it, naming it Docker Desktop Linux. Is that what it named it? Um, it's then, okay, so network. So it created a network for us uh, and it named it Express CRUD default. It created a volume, which it named it um, Express CRUD database volume. Uh, I created a container express cred database one, which is starting uh, if we full screen this. Uh, OK, so it started, but it's not healthy yet. Um, it's created a container, but this is waiting for, I believe, this to go. And so this is probably going to fail because we don't have that. That database comes in. The volume is brand new and there's nothing in it to then run, right? So we have a problem here. We have a, we have a um, cat and mouse? No, we have a chicken and egg problem. What? How did I go to cat and mouse in my brain? That was weird. So this should fail soon. But it is trying it is trying to wait until things are, are working if we open so if we go over here to the right we can do a docker compose ps and it will show us that okay so we're running express cred database one uh is attempting to run it was created about a minute ago and its health is starting. So it's in that starting state, which lasts a minute. Clearly the chicken is first, otherwise it would be the egg and the chicken problem. Ah, that's smart, yes. So the other container won't start here, like won't show up until this is, this is healthy. Which we know it's never actually going to be healthy. So we can actually check the logs of this. Do docker compose logs. Uh, and then this is called service database. And so we can see Okay, so the database started up. So the container started. Postgres starts up. Database is listening here. Database is shut down. Is this what I mean by databases up, down, up, down, up, down? It's uh, it, it goes up now and then it's then it's back up again and now ready to accept connections uh, and then it's it's good to go at this point in time. The problem obviously being that if we look to the left is that this is unhealthy. This aired out because it um, our health check is saying I want to look for this table to exist and clearly there's a problem there. That table cannot exist, which sucks. So 
Um, I think database of Postgres is up and, and we can look at that, right? So let's let's make some changes. In the actual lesson, I think we're just going to go straight to this solution. I don't think that it's it's helpful to say, and here's how not to do it. I, I've always hated uh, tutorials that like tell you that. Okay, so let's first, instead of selecting start from tasks, let's, um, let's say, so we have, we have a couple different things we could potentially do. If the data, okay, so if our database is up and running, I kind of like this. Okay, so our database is up and running, and we're going to uh, select star from Postgres, which is a container, which is the database that we're connecting to anyways. So this should, this should work. And so we want it to pass, I believe, three of them um, within our start period. So I don't think we need to... Uh, let's bring this back to like, thirty seconds. Timeout five seconds. Retries. Start period. Uh, let's just do five seconds. Wait five seconds and then try it. Okay, so if I just do that one change here. Oh, and if we come back over here now, not that command, I want this command. Um, you're up and still unhealthy. So it's still trying to run, but it's an unhealthy state, so nothing else was able to run for this. And if I want to rerun the Docker, if I want to rerun and like, because I made a change to Docker compose file, we're going to have to docker compose down first to remove it and reset. Uh, it does not re remove the volumes. So that's that's something to be aware of, unless you tell it to. And then we'll do another up. Oh, uh, I didn't want to do that. I want to do up with weight. Make the health check, make the table. I mean, it could, it could, but we do have a migration that makes the table for us. And and we definitely want that. The problem is obviously we need the database up and running in order to successfully make the table with the migration. Because if the, if the container says, yep, I'm up and running, I'm healthy. And then we go to make it, and it's like, no, no, I actually was lying. Database is not ready. Then that kind of sucks. I did not tell it that it had to wait a minute, right? Like I told it, it was like five seconds and then start and 30 seconds between that. Ah, uh, database. Okay, so database one is unhealthy. So it that, that command failed too, okay? Let's... Check the law. Uh, can we? Does the logs tell us what happened? Not really. That kind of that kind of sucks. Um, let's see. If I do a Docker compose exec database. And then we do the same com we do the same command we were gonna do before. So that's what PSQL um, dash 
command. There are three fatal. Um, yeah, but uh, so roll root does not exist shouldn't be the problem. Uh, but let's find out. So this select star from uh, select star from Postgres. And then I want to do, okay, so exact database psql um, dash u Postgres. Oh, Postgres does not exist. Uh, well, that okay, well, there you go. That's That's a problem. So if we just use, if we exec in there and take a look at what we got, uh, whereas user Postgres, and so if I want uh, D, D, L, no, um, D, S. Oh, there's no tables whatsoever. Oh, that's the problem. Okay. The problem is that there's no tables whatsoever, that there's a database named Postgres. Oh, okay. It was like connect or something. Yeah, okay, so there's a there's a database Postgres. Hmm, okay, so but there's no relations. That's our that's our problem. Okay, so we um let's see, what's a good What's a good check for this? I don't necessarily want to make a table for this. How about... Okay, so if we just connect in here, uh, PSQL. Okay, what what can we do? We can do. List available databases and exit. So we could just verify that that's working. So we could just uh, do. L. And that just lists these and then exits out. Maybe we just do that. Can you use the internal tables of Postgres for a query? I'm, I'm sure I can. Uh, there's these template tables. Sorry. The, there's the template databases. So the, the Postgres database doesn't have anything in it. These ones have, uh, let's see. So if I, um, if we connect to template zero, no, I'm not allowed to connect to template zero. Uh, I am allowed to connect to template one. A uh, spam, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, okay. Ooh, but there's no there's no tables in here so not not all that helpful unfortunately so i think what we're going to do is we're just going to list the the database the list the databases with the dash l command okay so we're going to do that um why learning dockers is so important um learning docker is important because it allows us to run our code inside of what we call containers, which are isolated little logical things that basically 
mostly separate them from the rest of our system. So if you want to play around with a new technology, like have a database running or, you know, run 15 different versions of your your service locally, you can do that without installing all the stuff, all the crap on your own computer. So for development purposes, Docker is extremely useful for basically keeping things clean and easy to, to work with. Um, on the production, well, I guess on the other side of um, development, uh, on the other side of the development um, part of Docker, it allows you to set up these scripts like this Docker file here, where all of your team members will now have exactly the same system, setup, configuration, environment uh, that uh, all of your other uh, teammates have working on the project. Um, if you've ever run into a problem where one person is running with like, you know, Postgres 13, one person is running with Postgres 16, and one person who has, somehow has Postgres 12, and uh, there's some weird, weird problem, and it works on my machine, but doesn't work on somebody else's, Docker basically is a way to say, no, nope, everybody's running on the same exact thing, and it looks like production. And that's the key, looks like production. Now, if you run Docker in production, it goes from looks like production to it is the same as production, which is huge. And a lot of people will sort of like poo poo on Docker in production because it is another thing on top of your code, right? It's, uh, it's basically adding in something that has to run that slows your code down. But there's some benefits to it, which is that consistency you know exactly what you're going to get it has some things that makes it a little bit easier uh it has those health checks added into it um, and so you can you can sacrifice a little tiny bit of runtime speed for a lot of benefits have you considered nix instead i like to describe it like docker without containers um, I've heard of Nix, but I've not, but I, I mentioned before, I haven't used it myself. And I've never been on a team that used it. Uh, we always use Docker. So it's, uh, it's, it's a, um, it's some, I put it on my system to, to look into. So eventually I'll get to it and take a look at it. But yeah, if you use something like AWS ECS, which is uh, elastic container system, then you're basically running Docker in production. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. Uh, so first of all, as I keep on forgetting this, technically I'm supposed to do a Docker Compose down first and then make changes uh, to this. So let's see. Um, our health check, okay, so your health check is gonna be fine. Your health check is gonna be PSQL. Oh, and I forgot to do this as a as with the user U. Oh, that's a that's another prop. Okay, so this is gonna be dash L. Um, and then uh, dash U. Postgres. Okay, so this should hopefully work, and get ourselves a basic empty Postgres database working. Can you recommend some tutorial channel for Docker? Uh, so I'm working on a tutorial right now, but I don't have it set up and running yet. Uh, so I guess like the last few streams that I've done on Docker, but they're big streams, right? Like they're long streams. I haven't created any cut versions of it yet. Uh, so therefore it's, um, I don't know how helpful that really is. Um, I would, after that, probably something like Free Code Camp. They always have some good stuff. They're probably a good place to go for, for some Docker things. And then also um, just going on to Docker's website and then following the, the Get Started tutorial and just like playing around with it locally and just trying it out. Like that's that's also pretty um, easy to get going. Um, okay, so let's do our Docker 
compose up. We'll wait for it again. Let's try it again. Maybe. Hey, there we go. Okay, so our database switched to healthy. And so then it switched over. Okay, now it's it started up our express CRUD. And then this should switch over to healthy pretty soon too. And then everything will be running, right? So you notice that it, it switched this from, it was starting. And then this was created. Now that it's healthy, now this can truly start up. And that's our depends on trick that we got. There we go. Okay, so now everything is running uh, and it's running in the background. So we can now do a Docker compose PS and see this, uh, see both of our containers up and running and waiting, waiting for us to do stuff. The problem here, of course, is that if I do my curl command and I go to 4002, uh, this fails because relation test does not exist because our database doesn't exist. So we need to figure out how to, once we have this system set up, we have to make the, uh, we have to make the migrations run in this container here. One time, just one time. Although like having it run every time is probably not going to be that big of a deal. So, okay, let's do a R down. Now, if I remember correctly, there was uh, there is something we can do in our Docker, um, not Docker file, in our compose file. I believe that there's a script, uh, so it's not command, this overrides the command, that's not what I want. I thought there was something that we can run, like run a script of some kind. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's part of the deploy. Uh, it's not part of the develop. Develop only has watch inside of it. I don't think it's part of environment. Oh, environment is just the environment variables. Okay, so I don't see that in here. Uh, is there anything else in here for us to work with? Don't think so. 
So instead, uh, we have a couple other problems. We have a couple other ways to fix this. The easiest way to fix this is to go to our uh, package manager. In this case, we're with Node.js. That's going to be our package.json. We have this um, uh, scripts dev. Now, uh, if we look at our Docker file, the command we're running is npm run dev. So npm run dev, that's this one right here. We can, I believe, have a, I think it's like a dev start. Like a dev, a pre-dev. I don't know if it's, I don't remember if it's pre-dev. So I want to say, um, next migrate up. I think that's what I want to run with this. Um, let's, let's find out if, if that, uh, if that does what we want it to do. Um, we can actually, you know what? Uh, okay. Hold on. Can I do... Oh, this won't tell me. Okay, so uh, my LSP doesn't know anything about the package.json file. Um, that would have been nice. So I want package.json npm specifically I want the script section. There's uh, pre-scripts and post-scripts. Oh yeah, so here, pre and then the name of the thing, right? And then whatever we're doing and then post. Okay, so I did it, I did it back, did I do it backwards or did I do it right? I did, yeah, pre-dev. So it's gonna write connect, it's gonna run connects migrate up uh, before running dev here like that. I could even do the same thing for start so it tries to run the migrations every time that this thing starts, but this will be fine. So we're gonna quit you. Um, the no other changes need to be had. Uh, we already did a Docker compose down, so I should be able to do a Docker compose up and this should run. So because it waits for the database to be up first and then the express container runs, those, uh, those migrations should successfully work so we should be able to do docker um let's see what docker um compose up um let's put this into daemon mode and let's also go into wait mode for this and now we get our fun our fun waiting again it takes like what about a minute and a half or so for the database to start up. Okay, there we go. So everything is started up and running. So we should now be able to do a uh, our curl command again. Uh, and I want to go to 4002, the task, because that's what we set it for. And there we go, task work. So our uh, migrate worked the way we expected it to. So uh, everything is now what, what we want. Um, so if I were to curl 
Did I use curl data? Those are my different curls that I have had. Okay, yeah, so here's curl. Let's go to 4002. So I want to, I'm gonna send a new task named task three to our our system here. And if we hit if we hit that, now I want to do our curl again. And there's our there's our new task that we created. And if I um, if we do Docker Compose down again. And then back up. I don't need the weight anymore. Oh, I probably should have done the dash D. Uh, everything is uh, everything's up. No, it's it's waiting for. Is it waiting for everything to work? I think I think it's all working again. So if I. Come over here. I should be able to do my curl. There it is. Okay, so now now my express server is up. I can curl to 4002 and I have everything in here. So there we go. Okay, let's take this down. Now it's time to write this. All right, so services. Okay, so we're gonna create um, services section. All right, so let's open up the Compose YAML file that we created and begin adding lines. Um, I'll put the full file at the bottom of this lesson. So the first one is we're gonna start with services. Okay, there you go for that. Albert, you're happy you managed to use an old laptop of yours as a second screen for your main laptop, all wireless and with uh, close to no latency. Nice.
Oh, it involves random software on the internet. That that ex that's like a lot of different things. Okay, so um, let's see. Next up, um, we're gonna come into develop later. So we're gonna do build first. So there's no build on. Um, there's no build on the database one. So this is just its own one. Um, you know what? Since I have everything already, I should just really... Okay. I thought I copied that, though. Okay, let's just grab this entire thing. Um, and... Oh, I think I didn't do the space. That was my problem. Okay, so I actually just grab it out of here. I don't have to go back and forth for that. Okay, so that's the thing for build. Okay, so the next one is uh, depends on. Okay, so however, we need to have the database running before uh, we um, attempt to uh, launch the Express app.
Um, oh, ad break just started. I didn't even notice that coming up. Uh, sorry, everybody, I couldn't give you warnings, but um, yeah, we'll do quick stretch. And then um, I'll just continue on working on this. We're just writing out stuff, so it's it's boring. Ooh, uh, guarantee. Okay, so we got that. Um, we don't need it depends on Okay, so we have that. Uh, next up, environment variables. Okay, so next we're gonna set up environment variables for the uh, for the services. 